used to always wonder who my people were, but I didn't have the opportunity of meeting them. And I'd sit and peep through the louvers to see if any of my family would come to visit me. There'd be countrymen, cars, but not one comes and visit me. <laughs> my mother. <laughs> my mother is one of the most happy-go-lucky women I've ever met. Mum loves laughing, and she's famous here in old Broomtown for her infectious laugh. But my mother, like many others who were taken, have a sad and dark history that haunts her and also haunts me. As a child, she was placed in the Mullabulla Health Clinic where the authorities decided to send her to Derby for fear of leprosy. After three months of care at the Derby Native Hospital, the health authorities established that she did not have leprosy. Instead of being sent home to her mother, the doctor made a decision which would change her life forever. We shall send child directly to Broome, as to send the child back to its mother would only make the separation then harder. Let's break faith with the mother now, as the child has been away now for three months. Oh, sometimes I used to wonder if I do have a mother, where is she? No sign of her turning up. I was kind of were turning up and we'd sit around and we'd see the others walking with their mums and dads. And I just used to wonder, are they going to turn up or not? But that's just the feeling I had. We just accepted them when they came. Native welfare or Native affairs just brought them in and, and we just accepted them. That was our crime. We just accepted them. Mm. Children were taken from all over the Kimberley, from Wyndham, Halls Creek, stations. Me, I was taken when I was three from Halls Creek area. We were sent sent to Broome, and some were sent to Beagle Bay. I grew up most of my life in the orphanage until I was a teenager. In 1957, I went to Derby to work at the Native Hospital. I stayed with friends. A car pulled up, a car pulled up with a man and a boy and said to me, your mum is outside. Hello, mum. You don't belong to me. You belong to the white habits. I thought she'd always come back to see me one day. But that day didn't come. When I heard she had passed away. That was the last I've seen and heard from her. She died in Derby. Looked like a grave here. You can see like a mark turn circle around. It's been so long. Mum, I bring this bunch of flowers for you. Yeah, 
as she went to her grave with a broken heart, poor thing. We just come to visit you. I don't know where you're buried, but still I'm here to see you and hope you rest in peace. I never knew my family until my son Mark got the papers from the Native Welfare. And now he's helping me searching to meet all the family. I've been told, and Mum's been told, that she was born in the riverbed of Margaret River, a place called Mutteringi. But I don't know if we'll get there. It's the rain season here in the Kimberley. There's a cyclone hanging around, because if the rivers are running, we're not going to be able to get through. And the only people that really know this country is Mum's Uncle Matt and Uncle Duncan. Mum came from somewhere. She came from a place in the Kimberley. She didn't just fall out of the sky. Bullering. Huh? Bullering. Huh? Bullering. 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 Funny name, isn't it? You're going to get him. <laughs> Duncan, isn't it? You gotta be there too. We gotta go through the station. Unless we go to Mary Pool and walk across, we'll go look for Duncan, eh? Mm-hmm. Now move on. Oh, on our way to pick up Uncle Duncan. I haven't met him before. He knows more about my life when I was a little child. We met him halfway. He came out of the car. I jumped out came over to me, put his arms around me, and shed a bit of tears. He told me a story when I was a little girl. He'd carry me around on his shoulders, and I'd pull his hair and lead him, left or right, for water. Lead him to water. Uncle Duncan couldn't come along on account of his being sick. But we were lucky we had Uncle Matt with us. We walked and walked and walked through the spinney. It started drizzling. To myself, I thought I'd never have a chance to see that tree. We kept on walking. The river is rising, it's running. I might not have a chance again. That's the country now, you Jim? Yeah. His name Mulleringi. Yeah. And that's the tree. We both should go down right down to that tree, that Minda tree. We should stand beside him, you know? Yeah. Right near. But this flood water coming up, you know, it's getting too big. We didn't get the helicopter. There was no way I'd ever get there and see it to myself. It was raining. It was a cyclone hanging around. See that, Mum? Look. And it was very hard to get out there again. Two rivers. That's the Mary and the Margaret. It's gone down. That's where we walked last time, Mum. Oh, we were standing right on that little reef. You wouldn't believe it. This country is so lovely and green. It's so hard for me to believe this is my country. It's like God wiped his hand over my country. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. One mother born here. Yeah. There you go, Mom. Yeah. You finally come back. Huh? Yeah. Once you've got a, got a family and grandchildren, no? mm -hmm. you can come back to this country. Place of your hospital tree. Mm -hmm. This is a place. We call them Mullering. Mm -hmm. After 56 years, yes. this is the first time I've been back. You don't know what that we've been telling them lies. No, mm. it's not that. I've heard from many people. Yes. But today I had the opportunity of coming to see it with my own naked eyes. So I'm touching yes. this tree. This is where I was born. Yes. Our hospital tree. This is your beginning, my mother? Yes, it is. Everyone should have a right to find out where they were born. Where they come from. Yeah. Yeah.